You know our first guest tonight from six seasons of SNL and a zillion other good things. She is a supremely funny person with a new movie called A Good Person. It opens in theaters Friday. Please say hello to Molly Shannon. <laughs> I'm doing great. Can I tell you something? When you yes. walk out, it's like a ray of, of a rainbow and a ray of sunshine all together. Hey. It's like, it's something... Thank you so much. You were so great hosting the Oscars. I just have to say that. Oh, thank you. you. I show, and you were superb. Well, you're very kind to say that. I you make it look that. so easy. Let's not deflect the oh, compliments okay. because. <laughs> Um, when you came out, I was immediately happier. It's, and it's oh, remarkable, sweet. and I'm sure you have that effect on people all the time. Thank you. I get really nervous. It's funny, even though I've been in show business for so long, I still, like, my heart pounds, and because I haven't done live variety shows since, you know, on a regular basis since SNL. So I tap myself sometimes when I'm nervous to calm myself down. It's like bilateral stimulation. Does it work? It, not at all. No. no. Yeah. <laughs> I'm still nervous. <laughs> so we see you smacking yourself. We know there's a problem. Yeah, there's exactly, right. exactly. Well, hopefully we're going to relax and get... And by the way, I learned something very surprising about you last week. You know about this? I'm not sure. What? Lucas Gage was here. Yes. He was your co-star in The White Lotus, the first season, oh, and you were yes. great on that show. Thank you, really funny. Thank you so much. He said, and correct me if I have any of this wrong, but yeah. he said that you and he are on a couple of different text chains. Yes. With, one of them is with the um, Nexium sex cult. Oh, yes, yes. We love, uh, um, Lucas Gage and I were both, we're, we're obsessed with cults and cult life and people who get out of cults, and we love The Vow, and I love, um, I love India's show called India Oxenberg Seduced. And so we follow a lot of the ex-cult members. And Keith, I was so happy to see Keith go to prison. And yes, yeah, so we <laughs> DM and we get very involved in the case. And we like the behind the, you know, we like to find, you know, information. It, it, it's just To the fantastic. point where you reached out to the, I don't know, are they victims? Are they members? What do you call them exactly? I call cultists? Them former cultists? Right, they're former cult members who are now free. Who are now and free. I love Yes, yes, I'm so happy for them. And these and, people are looking at their social media and they're like, wow, I got a, I got a direct message from Molly Shannon. Yes, oh, of course. With Talking her all about phone the number on it. <laughs> so what exactly. We also love, Lucas and I also love um, reality shows too. Vanderpump Rules, um, Scandival, oh, oh, Gift from God. Hey, you love all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, we love it, we love it. How many hours are you putting in watching these kind of things? A lot. A lot, huh? Yes, yeah. yes, yes. It's just, <laughs> I think that reality, uh, for, certainly for a lot of women, has replaced traditional comedy. We get our comedy from reality. And my husband doesn't like those shows at all. And he uh -huh. said he didn't understand why I'm so into it. But he was like, you know, it reminds me of like, it must be like what's similar to like a boxing match, like women taking sides. Like, Interesting. I'm on her side. I'm team Ariana, or I, you know, that, that type of thing. It's like sports. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. In yeah, a way yeah. where there's some overlap, but not uh, a ton. Yeah. yeah, exactly. So have you learned anything from these people texting um, with well, them? Yes, that... it's actually really interesting. I also love documentaries. And um, so I will sometimes DM the documentarian. I love uh, true crime and regular documentaries. Like I loved um, Murder um, in Middle Beach. It was, it was this wonderful filmmaker, Madison Hamburg, who did a um, documentary trying to discover, uh, look into how his mother was killed. And it's fascinating. How so, his own mother was killed. Yes. It's, wow. It's be a beautiful documentary. And so, yes, I DM'd with Madison because I have a lot of, you know, opinions about it watching. And I was like, would you mind if I tell you what I think? Because I have strong opinions. And he was like, no, go right, go right ahead. So I'll just say what I think of his dad and, you know. And what did you think? Who do you think did it? Well, I didn't really like the way his father spoke about his mother. I see. So I did tell him, yes. So you, you <laughs> wait a minute. You, you contacted him and said, I got some news for you, Madison. Yes, yes. Well, <laughs> I didn't. Father's Day? <laughs> <laughs> Don't go crazy with the gift. Yeah. yeah. 
I didn't want to overstep, so I asked, would it be okay if I share my thoughts on the case? <laughs> I could get involved, you know? Wow. And then I also love, recently I watched two documentaries, <laughs> um, A House Made of Splinters. It's about an orphanage in eastern Ukraine. And I, I was texting with a documentarian, and I was like, what happened to the kids? So it's like... Instagram has become like this, it's like a Q&A, like I love it. You have a it's lot so of follow-up questions. Yes, a lot of yeah. follow-up, yes, wow. yes. I would like to watch that, like the, your questions. Maybe this should be a show in and of itself. Yes. You follow up on all these different documentaries and cases. And yes, yes. Find out if Vanderpump really does rule or if that's just a... <laughs> I mean, we don't know that for sure. It was so funny. I'm so interested in Vanderpump Rules that I dreamt about Ariana last night. I had a dream that I saw her. She's one of the girls in the show. Thank you for explaining was... it. I was pretending. Yeah, I'm like, no. oh, yes. <laughs> sure, Ariana. Yeah. She is a dream. I mean, who wouldn't? <laughs> That's so funny, Jimmy. But, yes, yeah, there's a, there was a. <laughs> Wait, does your audience know about Scandaval? Yeah. Sure they do. Um, but I was gonna say um, all women and one guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I, I was gonna say because it was on my mind, I had a dream that Ariana, who, who's one of the girls, there was a cheating thing. That I had a dream that I was like, it'll be okay. Just last night, <laughs> I was like, maybe it's a blessing in disguise. And I was talking to her in my dream. But anyhow, nobody wow. should ever talk about their dreams. Have you now? Boring. Yeah, well, unless you're talking to Ariana, then and, and then we're all very, very keyed in yes, on it. Exactly. So, is there someone that you would like to talk to that you've been unable? to get in touch with? Um, maybe OJ? <laughs> um, maybe. <laughs> I'm sure we could reach out. Yeah, I mean, exactly. she's not doing Do much. She seems interview. to be doing a lot of golfing and making Twitter videos, yeah. yeah so. um, what years were you on Saturday Night Live? I was on 1995 to 2001. I had the best time. You worked yeah. with <laughs> many great people. Yeah including Adam Sandler, who was the recipient of the Mark Twain Prize oh. this weekend in Washington, D.C. Did you go to that uh, ceremony? I didn't get to go, but I did a dinner beforehand, before he left. We all did a dinner, a big dinner. A Mark Twain dinner for Adam, huh? Yeah, it was like a Mark Twain kind of pre-send-off dinner, so it was so nice. What was Adam wearing to the dinner? He, he, was, uh, he was casual. He had, like, a Hawaiian shirt, okay. and, but... He, he did have pants full length, not pants shorts. On. Yeah, so he was. Because I noticed he wore a suit to the Mark Twain That's thing, and funny. I was like, wow, I, don't, I haven't seen that in some time. That's so funny. When he was at Saturday Night Live, he was just so great. He, he um, recommended me to Lauren. That's how I got on the show. We went, he got on first. Adam and I went to NYU drama school together. And um, he was like, First he got on, and then we went to Jerry's Deli and had matzo ball soup, and he was like, kid, I'm gonna get you on too, just wait. And then he did. I did a stage show out in, in LA, and so he recommended me to Lorne. And I didn't realize, like, when I started the show, he really, you know, it's Lorne show, of course, but Adam really, like, ran that whole show. And he would come into work on his, he would rollerblade to work. <laughs> Isn't that funny, Jimmy? <laughs> Rollerblading? It is. And then he would write everything, he hand writes everything on a yellow legal pad, and um, he's just, he's just the greatest. He's so he nice. makes it look easy. The whole thing seems very, it's narrow, it's like, you know, it's like nothing. It's like he's got the whole world figured out in a lot of ways. It's so true, Jimmy. Well, you seem like that way too. You seem a very, very laid back. But I was gonna say, but Adam does make it look really easy, almost like he's not working, but he really works harder than anyone. And when he was at NYU, you know, he was like 17 or 18. All these kids were like going out for beers, hanging out. Adam would go to the clubs and work on his act and was perfecting his act. He worked harder than anyone. Yeah. And he was famous on campus. He would do stand-up in the dorms. And so you, you knew that he was going to be a superstar. A cult leader, in a way, some yeah. might say, you know? <laughs> he does have, he does yeah. have some subjects. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. But Adam did the sweetest thing when I first started the show. We were at a party, and I was new to journalists and critics, and it was a Stuart Smalley after party. It was like a premiere party. And, of the movie. Yeah, the yeah. movie. And, and um, Adam was there and I was there. A critic came up to me and said something really nasty. I, I don't remember exactly what it was, but it was something about the movie and then something about me, maybe. And so I went and told Adam, and Adam was like, who is it? And I was like, <laughs> it's that guy over there. And he was like, you, come here. Get the hell out of here. <laughs> really? And he had booted him out. And I've never been so protected. He felt like a protective big brother. Wow. You know? It was so sweet. And the guy was shocked. 
He was just showed him the door. Yeah, he's not just Mark Twain. He's like Arnold Schwarzenegger, That's too. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Molly Shannon is here. Her new movie yeah. is a good We'll be right back. Hey, Mama, can you tell me where my pills are? Which ones? We said we were going to wean off of them, remember? Did we? Yes. Because we are in pain and we need more. They're not going to give you more, Allie. They have to. No, they don't. I need them. Listen to me. You're not in physical pain anymore. Have you been doing the, the tapping thing that that one shrink taught you, remember, for anxiety and stress and it calms you down on the eyes and then the lips? That is Florence Pugh and Molly Shannon in A Good Person, which opens in theaters on Friday and is Written and directed by Zach Braff. Did you know yeah. Zach? Is he a friend of yours? I did. Zach Braff um, directed me 20 years ago on an episode of Scrubs. Oh, wow. And um, he was great. He did such a beautiful job with the movie. The movie is about, uh, well, you, you yeah, tell Yeah, it's us about, what about a, uh, I play the mother to Florence Pugh, and it's about a girl who, uh, she's involved in an accident, and she becomes addicted to OxyContin, and... Basically, it's about good people who make mistakes, and she's looking to forgive herself. She has a lot of guilt, and she wants to find redemption, and Morgan Freeman is in it, and he's looking for forgiveness. It's a beautiful movie about getting through dark stuff, and that there's Even light Even God looks for forgiveness. It's, it's really <laughs> remarkable. Even God, right? You have a scene with Morgan Freeman. Yes. Had you ever met him before? Did you no, know him? I had never met him, and he's yep. such a legend. He was so... He's so good. As a matter of fact, when I was acting with him, I was so distracted because it's like a bucket list. Like, I yeah. was like, I can't believe I'm in a scene with Morgan Freeman. So if you see the scene in the movie, you can see I look so distracted because I'm like, I'm acting with Morgan Freeman. <laughs> but, um, but no, years ago, I went to the Hollywood Wax Museum with my daughter, Stella, and I, I saw the wax figure of Morgan Freeman and was like, you know. <laughs> Is that? <laughs> yeah. So, I, yeah, it's not funny. <laughs> I hope that's the wax figure that's of Morgan. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I do. I told Morgan he thought it was so funny. We had so much fun, like, with all the wax figures of, like, Angelina Jolie and Brad Pitt. My daughter and I took pictures with all of them. She, you like that kind of thing? Yes, I yeah. love it. I yeah. like, even though I'm in show business, I like to do stuff, like, as a fan of Hollywood. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. You're not jaded, I no, guess. No, not at all. Yeah. I love a wax museum. When you're, um... <laughs> you know what I was wondering? I was thinking about you, and I was thinking about um, when you're on Saturday Night Live and you're doing as now you do shows and you're here for a couple months and you go do a movie and you're there for a couple months. Yeah. But do you ever have moments where you go like, oh, I have a character now that would be great on uh, if I was on a show every week? I, something that you might want to That's do. so funny. I do, actually. I've always wanted to do this, uh, this thing that I've talked about sometimes. Uh, it's Hot Cocoa Girls. It's, um, and I always wanted it's, to do a, it's called it's Hot, Hot Cocoa Girls. Hot Cocoa it's like, Girls. It's kind of like a baby girl, like a really babyish girl. I wanted to do this sketch on SNL, but I never got to do it. But it's like a girl who is just like always cold. Like, I'm so cold. And she's like really pretty. And, you know, maybe has like diamonds and a nice nail. And she's cold and she wants hot chocolate. She's like, I just want to sit by the fire. And she can be really like, she's like needy. She might put her head on her boyfriend's shoulder and just be like, honey, come here. And like, rest her head on his shoulder and like, could you, I just need something warm. And she also, she also might forget to eat. Like her boyfriend would have to be like, honey, you've got to eat. And she's like, oh. and he'll make her, he'll make her have bites. Like I would never forget to eat. Yeah, I've never forgot to I eat. I love to eat. Yeah, and, and maybe, and maybe this care, this, this came from uh, when I was little, my mom died when I was four. So it was kind of like an angry reaction to women who just had it so easy. They oh. could take advantage of having a mother and a father, and they didn't have to, they could just, you know, life was easy. They were just like, you know, my grandma died. <laughs> you guys, I'm so upset. So it felt different than losing a parent as a child. So it was like my anger, too, that I didn't get to be a baby oh. girl. I had to be tough when I was little. Right. So it's like, it's like that. And then there was a girl who <laughs> I met once who who was kind of like a, I call them hot cocoa girls. Uh -huh. And like she was, um, she was a theater producer in, in Vermont and I was eating an apple talking to her and I was like, uh-huh, uh-huh. And then I, I finished the apple and then I didn't know what to do with it. I had my purse and I was just like, oh, I just opened my purse and put the apple core in my purse. And she was like, oh my God, <laughs> like you just put an apple core in your purse. Like <laughs> she was 
so freaked out. <laughs> and I was like, if you knew how much darker it gets, you know nothing. Because you're a hot cocoa girl. Molly Shannon, everybody. She's not a hot cocoa girl. Her movie is called A Good Person. It opens in theaters on Friday. We'll be back with Giancarlo Esposito.